Hello everyone and welcome once again to the Train Aid HQ. My name is Nick and in today's video we're going to be looking at the Level 3 Award in Education and Training and we're going to be looking at Unit C which is focusing on understanding assessment in education and training. So the purpose of this video is we're going to be looking at the assignment in detail and just giving you lots of hints and helpful advice on how to answer the assignment questions. So as you know, this is uh, unit C, which is all to do with assessment. This is the final um, unit in the level three awards in education and training, okay. And just as a reminder, once you've finished your three assignments, okay, and they've been passed by the submissions team, you will receive an electronic certificate from Highfield as well, okay? Um, so do please use our written uh, templates. We're looking for roughly 2,000 words in terms of detail. And as we go through the video, we'll give you lots of advice on the assignment structure as well. Please do send uh, your assignment into the submissions team and they'll mark your assignment within five working days as well, okay? In terms of the assignment, you can of course write in the first or the third person. You can include practical teaching examples from your current teaching practice. If you're not in a teaching role, don't worry. You could perhaps write about things that you would like to trial in your future teaching or training practice as well. Okay. Um, in terms of source of information, of course, please use the Angra Bells textbook, the Level 3 Award in Education and Training. But if you would like to include other sources of information, further textbooks or websites, journals, do feel free to include those and just write uh, the name of the, uh, the resource just at the end of the assignment, just underneath the reference list as well. Okay, so we're starting off this uh, assignment with criteria 1.1, explain the purposes of types of assessment used in education and training. So we're kicking off this assignment by defining uh, the purpose of each type of assessment, okay? So within teaching and training, there are three uh, types of assessment. The most common ones are initial, formative, and summative. Okay, they're very, very clear. Um, initial is what we uh, use at the start of a course or qualification to find out learners' pre-existing knowledge of a subject, okay? It's a fantastic way to find out their, their baseline of knowledge, their, their skills, their experience. Uh, they're also their motivation for the course or qualification. And you as a teacher can find out whether or not they uh, require any uh, support or advice, anything that we can do as teachers to, to help them uh, with the course or qualification as well. In the middle, we have the, the formative, otherwise known as the on-course assessment. This is assessment which happens in the here and now. Okay, so for example, um, you could have Q&A, uh, discussions, uh, paired work, group work, all of those are formative um, assessment methods, otherwise known as the on-course. Okay, and finally, we have the summative uh, assessment method. This is where very much the end of the assessment process. So a typical exam, or it could be an observation, or um, handing in a portfolio of assignment is an, uh, a fantastic example of summative. So it's summative, otherwise known as summary, or otherwise known as the end of the qualification. Okay, so usually more formal than uh, formative, which is quite informal. Okay, in terms of this assignment, what we're looking for is for you to explain the purpose of each type of assessment, okay? Do include um, examples as well, um, but we're looking for between two uh, to 300 words, okay, there. And do have a look in pages 152 to 153 within the textbook. So this is going to start our assignments, okay? Okay, we're moving on to our next criteria. So we are going to describe the characteristics of different methods of assessment in education and training. Okay, so we're going a little bit further now and we're going to focus on formative and uh, summative assessments. Behind me, just on the table, we have a range of different examples here. So for formative assessments, we have verbal questions, recaps, quizzes, and also homework. Um, as a formative assessment method tool, so the on-course assessment. And we also have summative assessments as well. 
for example, assignments, examinations, presentations. And you could also have observations to, to name a few. OK, so uh, as I said, summative are a lot more uh, uh, formal as well. In terms of meeting this assignment uh, criteria, what we'd like for you to do is to describe the characteristics of formative and summative assessments. Perhaps um, explain um, just three examples uh, from each table, okay? And we'd also like for you to include any teaching examples. So if there are perhaps uh, formative assessment methods that you use within your teaching, why not explain two or three examples of your, perhaps your most preferred uh, style or uh, formative methods and also the same for summative as well. Okay, in terms of the word count, again, we're looking for between two to three hundred words, but you can, of course, write uh, more than that. Okay, so our next criteria is 1.3. Compare the strengths and limitations of assessment methods in relation to meeting individual learner needs, okay? For this criteria, you have to compare any three assessment methods. You have to explain what they are and also their strengths and their limitations, okay? So we're thinking about the learner's point of view here, the learner's individual needs. So just on the, the board, we have the examinations, presentations, and also assignments as well as an assessment method. So we need to think about the different uh, strengths and limitations. So for example, uh, with exams, you could describe perhaps the different types of uh, exams. This could be multiple choice, it could be perhaps an open book, or it could be, um, for example, um, a closed book examination as well. So perhaps just defining what an exam is. OK, and also the strengths and limitations. So thinking about the learner's point of view as well. So uh, in terms of the, the strengths, the learner feels that they within a controlled environment, they might prefer to to get uh, the um, assessment out the way in, in one go. OK, also a limitation as well. It could be that um, a learner might suffer from uh, exam stress. They might not uh, focus well. Uh, in examinations, okay? So we're thinking of the strengths and also the limitations as well, okay? You can also uh, tackle this assignment uh, question from sort of the teacher's point of view. So in terms of, uh, again, examinations, in terms of the, the strengths from a teacher's point of view, it just means that all of your um, learners are in the same standardised uh, controlled assessment, okay, um, and also, you know, lots of learners can be assessed at once. In terms of limitations, then it could be factors such as um, booking out a room and also arranging staff to invigilate uh, the examination room as well. So those are some uh, drawbacks and limitations to exams there. In terms of tackling uh, this assignment question, okay, you can of course use a, a table format. It might be quite easy uh, to, uh, to, to tackle this uh, question that way. We'd like for you to describe a minimum of three different assessment methods, okay? They are your choice, okay? You can use the ones provided by, by the table here. We'd like for you to describe the strengths and limitations. So aim for roughly two to three uh, strengths and two to three limitations as well. In terms of a word count, we're looking for between two uh, to 400 words here. And do have a look at textbook pages 158 to 170 as well. Now, just moving on to criteria 1.4 is to explain how different assessment methods can be adapted to meet individual learning needs, okay? So a good hallmark of any teacher or trainer is being sensitive, considerate towards the individual learner needs, okay? And we as teachers and also assessors have the power to make adaptations to, to change assessments um, to suit the individual learner needs, okay? So my advice is when starting a course is to have those early conversations with learners to see how you can support them as well. Just behind me are a range of different ways that you as a teacher or trainer can adapt your assessment, okay? So extra time, this is quite common. So the learner has 25% uh, 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 extra time, okay, to support the learner. They might suffer from perhaps exam stress here. 
okay, they just need a little bit more time to, to focus. They might also just naturally take longer to, uh, to read and to process uh, questions and information. So they do need that sort of support, that little bit of extra time to become familiar with the questions, okay? So you can arrange for 25% uh, longer. Also, you can arrange for perhaps a reader and a scribe, okay? So it might be that um, the learner does need someone to, to read out the questions, okay? And also perhaps the learner has poor uh, handwriting style, okay? And they perhaps do need a second person or a body um, to write down um, their response, okay? So um, that is another way that we can uh, adapt assessment there. Also, another key factor is perhaps having a private uh, exam room as well. So again, learners might suffer from uh, exam stress within sort of being in a, a, bi a big uh, hall with lots of other learners taking uh, their exam. So you can arrange for perhaps a private room. Of course, you have to organise for another uh, invigilator there. But that's a way that we can, we can support learners is through a private room. Um, you can also um, adapt the resources. Perhaps they have a particular need, okay, um, that you can perhaps arrange for uh, a different type of resource uh, to be used, okay, um, and you can arrange with that uh, learner individually. If they have perhaps a specific need, they could perhaps use a, a computer instead of handwriting, for example, so you could adapt assessments, you can provide them uh, with resources. It could also be perhaps a recording device as well for them to verbally um, explain their their answers to, to questions rather than writing down. So you can adapt uh, the assessment that way. Furthermore, you could perhaps have a, a translator, you could have perhaps a, a support staff member who can sit with the, uh, the learner and to um, just to explain the, the questions once again. And also, just I would also reiterate to be a supportive manner as well as a teacher or trainer. So when preparing learners for assessments, be supportive, be honest, um, give them timely reminders as well. And also things such as um, it could be mock tests as well are going to support learners in preparation for uh, an exam or an assessment. In terms of the activity, we'd like for you to reflect on three ways that assessments can be adapted, okay? And think about why it's important that we adapt um, assessments uh, for our learners, okay? So think about that supportive nature and manner. And also, um, you can of course include any examples of where you as a teacher or trainer might have adapted assessments in the past as well. So do bring in those personable experiences um, if you've got those within your teaching. In terms of a word count, we are looking for between two to three hundred words as a minimum there. Of course, you can write more and do have a look at pages 152 within the textbook. Okay, we're just going to move on to criteria one, uh, sorry, criteria 2.1 now. Explain why it is important to involve learners and others in the assessment process. Okay, so when organising any assessment um, as a teacher or trainer, it's really, really important to, to get learners on board as soon as we can, okay? The reason for this, it promotes clarity, okay? So if we can uh, perhaps do mock tests, uh, we can um, also um, speak with the learners about uh, the assessment in detail. We can also have a look at the, the grading criteria and that's going to calm nerves. It's going to get learners to, to focus more on the assessments and they're going to feel a lot more confident going into uh, the assessment process. So I think lots of um, practice is going to be good. So in terms of clarity of information, they can understand about um, the awarding body, how to answer questions. It could be something quite practical based as well. So they, they understand the skills required uh, to demonstrate um, within uh, an assessment method as well. So they become more confident that way. Perhaps doing role plays is going to, to help them to understand how to um, take part within an assessment. Also fairness for the learner. So as teachers and assessors, we don't want to spring assessments on learners. So it could be quite unpleasant if they have um, a short amount of time to prepare. So we need um, learners to feel that they are being treated fairly, that everyone has the same time limits um, to prepare for uh, an assessment as well. 
and also for reliability and standardization purposes. So in terms of other teachers, okay, it could be um, fellow teachers that are teaching the same course as you. Are they giving the same time uh, for their learners as yourself? So it's going to be very important that everything is standardized, all the same learners have that same experience. Okay, it's very important that happens in terms of like reviews, feedback from learners. Okay, they have to feel that their experience is a fair one. And furthermore, expectations for the learner as well. So learners can see uh, where, what level that they are working at. Okay, they might need to uh, achieve a certain grade. Okay, some learners just want a, a pass, others perhaps want a distinction or an A star. So it's very important to communicate uh, when an assessment is going to be happening and also your expect expectations as a teacher and also their expectations as well, you know, do they match together as well. And also staff support as well, it's very important to get staff members uh, involved within the assessment process. Again, it could be booking out rooms, it could be um, adapting your timetable as a teacher or trainer, it could be organising resources, extra staff to be invigilators. So um, if you can get your staff members, your fellow colleagues on board early, then of course um, changes can be made um, to support you, the teacher. Okay, so in terms of this uh, assignment activity, we'd like for you to explain a minimum of three reasons why it's important to involve both learners and others within the assessment process. Okay, so just three uh, reasons there. And again, the suggested word count is between two to 300 words. You can, of course, write more. Do have a look in pages 170 to 171 as well. Okay, so we're just moving on to criteria 2.2. Uh, to explain the role and use of peer and self-assessment in the assessment process, okay? So it's not just down to yourself as a teacher or trainer uh, to give feedback. There are other ways that um, learners can uh, receive uh, feedback on assessments, okay? There is peer assessment, okay? So this is where uh, a peer or a fellow classmate, for example, gives the learner feedback okay so it, it is a very very common uh, tool used within training okay and more often than not uh, learners will listen better to their peer than a teacher or a figure of authority okay so do trial this method and see if it works well for you but in terms of uh, peer assessment okay some of the benefits here is that uh, learners begin to understand the assessment process and also learners, um, they understand how to uh, give constructive feedback to one another. So they're thinking about how they're giving feedback um, in a positive manner. Um, it promotes learner responsibility. And in terms of um, peer feedback as well, it's promoting those functional skills, listening, it's promoting language as well. And in terms of um, the actual class, Think about, you know, when is it going to be used, okay? Uh, think about whether you can do this um, perhaps in a quiet environment. If it's noisy, then it might not work as well. So think about the classroom dynamics here. Another key feature is self-assessment. So this is where the learner um, writes down their, their thoughts, okay? How it went for them. So it's very important that this happens. They have time to reflect on their own personal views, okay? So it does create ownership of the assessment process. So rather than the teacher uh, giving feedback, okay, it's very important that this happens, okay. So think about the ways in which that you can use uh, self-assessment within uh, this uh, process here, okay. In terms of your own self, um, we would like for you to explain the term peer assessment and the term self-assessment within your portfolio. Okay. Now, furthermore, we are going to be looking at the term um, 2.3, identify sources of information that should be made available to learners and others involved within the assessment process. Within this question, we'd like for you to think about what sources of information prepare you um, for the actual assessment. So it's very important that you do give learners the assessment criteria. 
information on deadlines, okay? It could also be providing your learners with a reading list as well. So they can perhaps do homework, they can do uh, reading outside of their, their classroom time to prepare them uh, for an upcoming assessment as well. It's also important to, to give learners um, grade boundaries, so information on what they need to do to achieve the highest grades, and also some learners uh, just receive, perhaps they just want a pass, okay? So it's very important to, to give them that understanding of what it is that they are going to be looking for. And finally, results is very important as well. So learners are, you know, they, they could be really, really motivated to find out when they are going to receive the results. So letting them know, okay, when they are going to receive their results. Is it going to be instant or is it going to take a little bit longer? Are the results going to be sent out by post, okay? Or is it going to be perhaps by email as well? So letting them know uh, the time frame for receiving results here as well. So all of this information is key within the assessment process. Within this criteria, we'd like for you to explain the different sources of information which should be available to learners um, prior to an assessment, okay? Um, do include own experiences of assessment. So think about um, the things that you've uh, provided learners in the past, okay? So think about those methods. What have you given to your own individual learners there? The suggested word count here, again, is between two to 300 words. You can, of course, write yeah, more information there. Okay, we're moving on to criteria 3.1. This is to describe key features of constructive feedback, okay? So within any uh, teaching organisation, assessment will take place and you've got to give constructive feedback in a certain way to your learners. One key method is the, the layer cake, okay? It's very common within teaching and assessment. This is where you provide your learners with uh, positive feedback first, okay? So this is four or five points that went uh, well within regards to the assessment. So you could say, very well done, uh, you passed the assessment. These are the factors that I was impressed with uh, as an assessor followed up by areas for development there. So it's very important to give one or two things that the learner can Im improve upon within their teaching practice. And finish off with positive comments as well. So finish off with positives, bring it back and say what ways, um, you know, what things uh, they have done well. And it's very good to finish off on a positive manner as well. But within any type of assessment and feedback, it's very important that you let the learner know straight away that they've passed, or if it's a fail, if, that, if it's a resubmission, just let them know straight away um, because they are going to obviously be quite nervous to see whether or not they've passed. So let them be at ease first. For this assignment question, we'd like for you to explain the layer cake uh, feedback methods, okay? Do you include any other uh, methods of providing constructive feedback? And also any examples that you might have uh, about um, assessing as well. So think about your own personal experiences and do say examples, what practice uh, have, have worked for you in the past. In terms of word count, we're looking for between two to 300 words. Again, do feel free to write more. We are sort of approaching the tail ends of uh, Unit C, okay? Uh, the next criteria is explain how constructive feedback contributes to the assessment process. So we've looked at the layer cake, okay? And we're thinking, why is um, positive feedback um, and constructive feedback so important within the assessment process? Well, there are a number of reasons. So constructive uh, feedback is positive. This is going to serve to motivate the learner, okay? It can uh, give them that push uh, throughout the course or qualification for them to stay on track, to stay focused and upbeat and positive, absolutely. In terms of um, giving the learner direction, okay? It gives them a focus. They can see when the end goal is in sight, okay? So it keeps them on that track and they can see perhaps future targets are getting closer as well. The learner can also set targets as well. So perhaps if they they don't sort of quite meet the grades in terms of halfway through a qualification, they, they receive feedback from a teacher or trainer and it gives them that sort of focus um, to, to work on their assignments, perhaps get back on track as well. So it, 
it can be positive and also constructive in that manner. And it should ultimately motivate learners as well. Okay, so we have to keep that motivation going throughout the course of qualification. In terms of uh, this assignment criteria, we'd like for you to explain how constructive feedback um, is, is so vital within a course or qualification here. So think about the purpose of uh, being a motivator within the, uh, the course or whatever it is that you are teaching. In terms of word count, we're looking for between two to 300 words. Again, of course, do feel free to write uh, more. Okay, um, criteria 3.3 is to explain ways to give constructive feedback to learners. Okay, so there are many ways in which that you can give uh, feedback to learners, okay, after an assessment has taken place. It could be a uh, one-to-one, -one, so within a private teaching room, okay, and it could be done immediately after the assessment has taken place, or perhaps 24 hours later, so it gives you that time to perhaps write up your, your notes in preparation um, to, to give a, a debrief to the learner. I always think that uh, no more than 24 hours, um, otherwise that a learner might forget that experience. So try and keep it within that 24 hour window, okay? Other ways that we can um, sort of uh, give feedback is through written feedback as well, okay? So it could be a report, it could be an email, okay? It could, be something which is is concrete they could they could save it to their records as well it could be things like cpd records um so they have to have um, a written copy of your your notes okay it could be one-to-one -one or it could be perhaps in a group discussion as well so it could be perhaps a panel of teachers and assessors giving feedback um to the the learner as well so there are a range of ways in which that you can provide feedback and of course within perhaps a one-to-one -one meeting you can also record your meeting as well for, for standardization purposes and for your own records in terms of this assignment what i would like for you to do is to perhaps reflect on a minimum of three ways in which you can provide feedback to your learners in a constructive manner again aim for between two to three hundred words here okay the next criteria is 4.1, explain the need to keep records of assessments of learning. Okay, so we're thinking about record keeping as a teacher or trainer. So it's very important uh, for you as a teacher or trainer to be organized, uh, to keep records, okay? And from a teacher's point of view, um, there are three key reasons. To track your learner progress, okay, so learners, would like to know um, how they're progressing with your course or qualification so you can give them targets and feedback, okay? You can let them know whether they're on track for a, perhaps a pass or if they do need to, um, to, to perhaps uh, work on sort of different aspects in order to, to pass a course or qualification. And also for evidence as well. So as a teacher, you're going to be accountable to your organisation and also your managers. It could be that your manager um, does say, I'd like to see um, one, of the, one of your learners, uh, your records, perhaps marking, or could, or could be perhaps a parent or a fellow colleague would like to see the learner's work that has been marked by you. So it's vital that we are organised and we can pass over that information uh, to be reviewed as well at any point. And furthermore, to predict grades, okay? So a learner might be progressing uh, to perhaps a future course or qualification, okay? So you can give them honest feedback and let them know perhaps what they are going to achieve and the, the targets that they need to meet, okay? So those are just three ways um, in which that, uh, why it's so important for us as teachers um, to store records from a teacher point of view. Uh, we would like for you to reflect on these, these three reasons, okay, to explain each one. And again, a suggested word count there is between two to 300 words. Okay, our last criteria for this uh, unit C is to think about, um, is to summarize the requirements for keeping records of assessments uh, in an organisation. So again, we're thinking of record keeping, but from an organisation's point of view, okay? So as a teacher, it's very important that we keep records in terms of the internal verification process, 
okay? So when working with a, a team of teachers or trainers, it's important that you do compare each other's marking, okay? Your perhaps feedback style, your, uh, your methods of assessment. So during internal verification, the process or meetings, the IV process or meetings, it's, you have to keep learner work in order to, to swap and to share uh, good practice so you can see the level of detail that perhaps your, your colleagues mark, okay? So that's very important for you as an assessor to see whether perhaps you are over-assessing or under-assessing. Ideally, we would like to meet in the middle, okay, so that all learners are receiving that same assessment experience. Also, for the external verification process, so this term is where you perhaps have to keep your, your records in order to, to issue uh, perhaps awarding bodies with a sample of perhaps learner work of assessments so they can see that your organisation has carried out assessments in a, in a constructive way, the correct way and therefore you have to keep these records organised, okay? So there should be a small sample, perhaps five or 10% of learner work, which is reviewed by uh, an EV um, um, on behalf of the awarding body each year. So it's very important that you do keep your records safe and secure. And finally, the appeals procedure. Of course, learners do have a, a right to an appeal. So the appeals procedure is usually seven uh, to 14 days after an assessment has taken place. So learners do have that right to an appeal. So very important that you do keep your records safe and secure um, just in case there is an appeals procedure about an assessment decision. OK, for this criteria, I would quite simply like for you to reflect on uh, three reasons why it's important that we keep records on behalf of the organisation. Again, we're looking for between two to three hundred words. Okay, uh, you come to the end of your uh, assignment and what we'd like for you to do here is we'd like for you to, to write uh, a paragraph on what you have learnt uh, from this unit, perhaps you've, it's refreshed uh, your assessment practice as well. So think about what you've, you've learned there and also how might uh, it influence your future teaching as well. So what have you taken on board? What can you um, apply to your future practice? OK, uh, we'd also like for you to sign and date uh, a, a type signature is absolutely fine and put the, the date that you've completed your assignment on there. And do send it into the submissions team to receive feedback within five working days as well. And they'll let you know whether it's a pass or that you've got any corrections to be made. OK, so my name is Nick and thank you very much for watching today's video. Do like and subscribe to the Train Aid uh, social media page, our YouTube page to receive the latest updates from the team. Thank you once again.